Hi everybody, welcome to my beginner's quick start guide to the Division 2. Now, if you haven't played the Division before, um, you've probably watched videos of the Division and the Division 2 and thought, wow, this looks like a really exciting, good looking third person cover based shooter. And it is absolutely that. Um, but it can be a little bit daunting at first to actually realise and understand what it's all about, what you kind of do, how you progress. Um, excuse me. While I just shoot these people. Um, and it can also be very frustrating to start off with because you don't... You don't always understand why you're not beating enemies, um, why you keep dying on missions, um, and uh, why some levels seem to be incredibly... incredibly difficult. Okay, so we'll let these guys kind of do their own thing. So, as I say, the story of the Division 2 is that the virus that attacked New York in the Division 1 has spread all over the country and it's ended up in the capital of the uh, United States um, and the capital has fallen into disarray. We've been activated because the division we're like a secret service of paramilitary soldiers. We've, we've been activated and we've brought to the capital to help sort things out, bring law and order back to the city. So, if we have a quick look at our map, what we can see here is I'm in um, uh, this area, which I can't remember what it's called. So it doesn't say. <laughs> I was in downtown east. Oh, I'm in the Federal Triangle, that's it. And the map is split into lots of sections. The White House is our home base of operations. So that's where you'll start off when you do the little introduction mission. I won't show you that, I won't spoil that because it's really cool. And the way that you progress through the game is you do lots of little missions and kill lots of people. And those missions can, uh, consist of the story missions, the main missions, which progress you through finding out what's happened about the virus, what you're going to be doing about it. You have side missions, which are related to the story, but are more to do with the mechanics of the world. So things like um, destroying ammunition dumps or saving hostages. Um, or going to find um, different types of tech. You also have settlements, and settlements are like mini bases of operations that um, need your help um, to normally clear the area. And once you help a settlement, they will also send resources back to your main base of operations, the White House, and um, send specialists back there to make it more effective, to unlock different perks and skills uh, that you can use. You have safe houses that you can visit. Um, you also have control points as well which to start off with are controlled by the enemy um, and then you take them over and then they also then become places where you can go and you can uh, collect loot um, and be get more powerful weapons and so you basically you'll clear a particular area say this square and in the process of clearing that area your character will level up you'll become more powerful you'll find better guns better armor um, and that will mean you can then progress to another area. Now, all of these areas you can actually go to, but there's no point going to a level tw 25 area when, say, you're a level 5, because the enemies will be too hard for you. They will just they will just destroy you because you won't have enough don't have power of armor and you won't have powerful enough weapons. So you have to um, you have to level up. So this is a very RPG element for a shooter. Um, Often what that can mean is replaying things like the missions, the main missions, but you replay them, say, on a harder difficulty level, because that means you'll get better loot, so you'll get better armour, you'll get better guns, which means you can then go and challenge these harder levels. Now you also have the dark zones dotted around the map, and the dark zones are where the player versus player combat um, 
uh, exists and where you can also get very powerful loot and the dark zone is, is a lawless place i mean the rest of dc is pretty lawless as well but this is an extra lawless place where when you go in um, other agents so other real players can turn on you and kill you you can also team up with people and do things like that but also the enemies the ai enemies you come across are very powerful and the idea in the dark zone is you destroy enemies you go to uh, points of interest um, and you collect loot and then to get that loot out of the dark zone you have to go to an extraction point um, call in a helicopter hope that you don't get attacked or if you do get attacked defend yourself while this helicopter comes in it extracts the loot gets decontaminated and then you can use it now this all might sound very complicated but don't worry okay your main job is to run around doing these side missions doing these story missions clearing the control points and generally getting yourself into bother as you're running around and the numbers then will slowly go up you will get better kit so let's have a look at my soldier just to kind of explain what's going on so this is my character here so let, let me select that so your character can carry to start off with you can carry three weapons sorry you can carry two weapons to start off with and then you'll unlock a perk in the white house that enables you to carry three so you can have like an assault rifle and a sniper rifle or a submachine gun and an assault rifle and a pistol you know whatever you want to do when you click on the weapons you can see them all here and what you're looking to do is say this top weapon here the military mk17 if you look at the right hand side you, it tells you it's a military mark 17 standard it's a rifle um it does 732 damage with a uh, rpm of rounds per minute of 275 with a 20 round mag what matters is the number so look at damage and rpm that's what matters um, and the fact that it's a level 7 weapon so if you pick up a level 8 weapon it will generally be more powerful than a level 7 weapon so that's what you do you always pick up the the more powerful weapons now you do get things like shotguns like that if you look at the damage on that shotgun it's very very high 2200 but the rpm is very very low because shotguns only fire very slowly and it won't have much range so r remember that as well then if you get something like this svd it's a marksman rifle that does lots of damage 200 919 but the rpm is pretty low and then if you get something like a uh, m44 carbine again this does loads of damage 1.6k but the rpm is only 55 because it's a bolt action rifle so always bear that in mind the damage and the rpm but you want to be looking at that level what level is the weapon now on the also on the right hand side you'll see lots of um, you can put attachments on to that particular weapon and you do that if you press the the mod button you can then change things like the scope you've got um, like a four times a micro red dot um, you can change your magazine you can change what's on the, the, the grip and what's on the muzzle now you can't do this straight away but when you go into the White House and you have a look round you'll find um, the, the different perks that you can lock up and th some of those are the attachments you'll also find the uh, crafting station where you can make things and you'll also f and within that as well you'll discover blueprints where you can make different types of attachments to attach to the guns Again, this sounds very complicated, but once you start getting into it, basically, all you do is you go on the weapon, you press mod, and then you add the bits you want to it. You'll notice there's various numbers next to the, say, the scope. The ACOS scope gives me 25% range, but minus 5% critical hit damage. Just use the scopes that are good for you, so they work for you, and also where the numbers go up, so you'll get higher level scopes. As you get more into the division, you'll get into sort of what we call builds and creating um, different setups that do more damage because the weapons and the armor work together to give you lots of different bonuses. But don't worry about that too much at the mo <coughs> at the moment. So let's go down to look at gear. So we've got a mask, we've got body armor, we've got knee pads. Oh, sorry, a holster. We've got a backpack. We've got gloves and we've got knee pads again at the beginning all you're really looking to do is find the stuff that's got the biggest numbers so what you want to do is as you find loot if it's a higher level than what you've got on equip it so level 8 level 9 level 10 etc now again as you start to get more advanced into the division you'll see if you look on the right hand side this is a tactical 
48 hour backpack and it's a set called the Providence Defence Set. Now as you wear more of the same sets in terms of backpacks, knee pads, gloves etc that gives you more bonuses to do more damage to enemies or maybe to, to have a higher um, armour rating or to be better at, at different things better recovery that that sort of stuff but again at the beginning don't really worry about that all you're looking is that the numbers should be higher use the kit with the higher numbers then we've also got our skills down the bottom so I've got a, a concussion grenade um, and I use the um, turret and at the moment I've got the seeker mine uh, this is I'm doing this guide in the beta where probably when I in the main game I will be using the pulse so that's kind of a, a basic to kind of the gear but I don't want to really overwhelm you with all that sort of stuff because as you play the game what I recommend you do is you go onto YouTube and you look at videos by Marco Style and other uh, informative division players and they will explain this in far more depth so let's just have a quick look at some of the mechanics behind moving around the map so as I said it's third person there's no crouching or jumping um, but what you can do is when you come close to cover if you press the cover button you can go behind cover like this and then if you go to the side your chap will like stick to that cover and move around it if you want to climb over the cover you press well, circle on playstation and we'll climb over the cover that way when you're in cover if you want to come out of cover just pull away from it the stuff again hit the cover button and you'll stick to it or press in the in the uh, PlayStation's it's circle button, and I can jump over it. Aim down sight, obviously. And then, if you've got something like a four time scope on it or bigger, if you click in the right stick on a console, you'll aim down sight. If you're using a true sniper rifle, as soon as you aim down sight, you'll go straight into the scope anyway. Now, because of the way that the RPG mechanics work on the game, you'll notice that when I fire at somebody, that's a friendly, even if I hit them in the head, they don't die straight away. And did you see those numbers coming off them? That's because basically the division is like an RPG. So your gun, although it's hitting someone, It's taking off a load of uh, hit points, if you like, and doing a load of damage. And the more powerful your gun, the more damage you will do. So that's kind of what's happening there. And what that can mean is that sometimes the more powerful enemies can basically be bullet sponges. But don't worry about it, that's part of the, the game. And the fact that the gunplay is so much fun and the guns sound so good, that can be really good. Now, the other things you have at your um, disposable, disposal, as I say, I've got my little turret that I can put out. I've got my seeker mine, which can follow me around. I've also got grenades that I can throw, like that. And I've got meds that I can apply to myself to make myself better. If you bring up the map and you want to go to a particular point, so I want to find out what's going over here, just select it. Sure. Take your time. And then you see that orange line that's appeared? It means that I can follow that and go to the particular places on the map and do the missions. We can do a front roll. Pistol is always a, a good backup. Now, one of the main things about the division to remember is that although you're a, a really powerful soldier and um, you've got some great kit, even say I'm a level seven, even if a load of f level four enemies sort of approach me and attack me en masse, that can be very difficult to deal with and so one of the things to remember is is the tactical withdrawal so if you're in a situation say there's loads of enemies up here and they were running towards me one of the most important things to do is there's nothing wrong with running away getting behind cover 
engaging them, say, and then running away some more to live to fight another day. Because although you will respawn, um, if you're doing one of the missions, that means often you've got if you've got to do that checkpoint again, and that can be a little bit frustrating. And remember, move from cover to cover. Make use of your grenades and make use of your special abilities because they will help you take on lots and lots of enemies. Okay, so I don't really want to go any more detail in this particular video because I say this is just a beginner's quick start guide. All you really need to know to start off with is kind of stick to the area, the first area, go around, do all the side missions, do the story missions, collect all the loot and change your equipment to the bits where the numbers go up and you'll become more powerful. And then keep an eye on your level, so I'm level 7, and then when you get to the appropriate level, then think about moving to another area. But try not to go, if you're a level, for example, you're level 7, or a level 19, I wouldn't go to a level 25 because I would be outclassed. I might even wait until I was like a level 27 before I went there, because then I would find it a little bit easier that way. So there we go, that's my beginner's quick start guide to the Division. Hopefully, the Division 2, sorry, hopefully it's helpful. It's probably giving you more questions than answers, but this is a really deep game. Remember, although it's an excellent third-person shooter, it's an RPG at heart as well with RPG mechanics. And as you get more into the game and you actually do the things like add the mods and play around with the perks, you'll then start to understand them, how they apply, and you'll you'll really get into it. But anyway, if you've got any other questions or comments, please put them down below. If you enjoy the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. Thank you very much, and I will see you again soon.